morning. Good morning. Happy Lord's Day to everyone. This is the second Sunday of the year, and we are continuing to focus on our theme for this year. And uh, the messages for uh, January, we are looking at the foundation or the basis of our theme. What is our theme for 2020? What is KBCF theme for 2020? Nourish to flourish. In one word, it's all about fruitfulness. And what is the key? What is the key to fruitfulness? Abiding in Jesus. But that's only one part. Abiding in Jesus and Jesus abiding in us is the key to fruitfulness. John chapter 15 verse 5 where we based our theme says, Whoever abides in me, but the other part is, and I in him. He it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. From the very start, I would like to emphasize that it is abiding in Christ and him abiding in us. And then we can be fruitful. Continuing in the ministry of Jesus, as Pastor June expounded last Sunday, is the measure of fruitfulness. Sometimes fruitfulness can be a very general or vague concept, but how do you see fruitfulness? How do you measure fruitfulness? It is abiding or continuing in the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. The ministry he started and continuing it. That is how we can measure fruitfulness in our lives. God has sent him for a mission. And as the Father has sent him, he says he is sending us. He speaks of continuity. What the Lord Jesus Christ has started, the mission God that has given him, we, his disciples, we, his children, must continue. And that is the measure of our fruitfulness. John chapters 14, 15, and 16 contains one of the longest discourses of our Lord Jesus Christ. It was the night before he was crucified. And probably foreseeing that the following day he will be crucified and he will be leaving his disciples, he would like to give them some very important words. And one of the main themes of these long chapters, a very long discourse, is about the Holy Spirit. Jesus speaks about the Holy Spirit. Jesus abides in us through the Holy Spirit. He was about to depart. He was about to leave his disciples. But he says, he will continue to abide in them. And we will continue to abide in him as we live in the Spirit. So my proposition for this message is that as the Spirit abides in us, and as we abide in the Spirit, two way, we can fulfill His ministry to the world. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. This ministry, we can fulfill it together with our Lord Jesus Christ, a partnership as we abide in Him and as He abides in us. But what is this ministry of the Holy Spirit? What is this ministry? John chapter 16, the passage we read, talks about the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the world. It's unique in some ways. All other mention of the Holy Spirit in the Bible talks about His ministry to believers. But this particular passage, 
Bible commentators have noticed, it particularly and only speaks of it only speaks of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the world. And in verse 7, it says, the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the world is to convict the world of guilt. In some translations, as, uh, where, as was read to us by uh, Joshua, it says that to, 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 show, to show that the world is wrong. To show, to, to reveal to the world where it has gone wrong. First, in regard to sin. To convict the world in regard to sin. That word, that word, to convict the world in regard to sin, means is to show the world its sin. Or to reveal to the world what sin is. And after revealing to the world what sin is, to call the world to repentance. To call the world to repentance. The question is, what is sin? The common concept of we have of sin is misbehavior. Right? Sin is misbehavior. Sin is all about a list of do's and don'ts that we should always consider to do the do's and to don't do the don'ts. But when the Lord Jesus Christ speaks of sin, it is of a much greater scope. In regard to sin, he said, what about sin? Because men do not believe in me. In essence, Sin is not about misbehavior or a list of do's and don'ts. Sin is about rejection and unbelief of Jesus Christ. The misbehavior is just the symptom. But the root cause is people do not believe in God. People do not want to be in submission to God. Sin is rebellion in the very essence. And because we rebel, because the world rebels against God, then there is the misbehavior, there is the, the uh, doing things that they, they're not supposed to do, or not doing the things we are supposed to do. Saying things, thinking things, these are but the symptoms. Essentially, sin is rebellion against God. Jesus Christ said, the Holy Spirit will convict the world that sin is rejection because they do not believe in me. His very first message, the very first message of our Lord Jesus Christ at the very start of his ministry, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. When he said, repent, what did he mean? Not particularly repent of stealing, repent of uh, lying, repent of these things, but it's all about the context, it's all about the kingdom of God. The meaning of repentance in this passage, according to the context, is recognize that God is king. If you think that you are king of your life, if there's any other king or God or Lord in your life, repent. God is king. The kingdom of God is here. And that is the gospel. The kingdom of God has come. It goes beyond personal, individualistic, looking at ourselves. But it talks about the kingdom of God, which covers all things. The Holy Spirit will not only convict the world of sin, the Holy Spirit will convict the world in regard to righteousness. He said, in regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father. Righteousness. Because I am going to the Father. What's the connection? What's the connection? What is righteousness about Jesus Christ going to the Father? Well, the world has its own standard of righteousness. 
We're familiar with that. How do people get to heaven? We have our own standard of righteousness, the world in general. Do this and do that. Join this group or that group. Then you will be acceptable before God. Because righteousness actually means a condition acceptable to God. How can I be acceptable to God? The world has different standards of righteousness. But the standard is our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was considered unrighteous. That, was, that is why he was condemned to death. But he says here, I am going to the Father. He was justified. He was vindicated of his righteousness by the Father. Righteousness is not what the world thinks. The Holy Spirit will show us in the wrong about our concept of righteousness. Righteousness is all about Jesus Christ. We do not have any righteousness of our own. We have no righteous standing before God apart from Jesus. So how do we get to be righteous, acceptable before God? Not by our concept of good works, not by our, our concept of self-effort. It is all because of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will convict us of that truth. And the Holy Spirit will convict the world in regard to judgment. In regard to judgment, says verse 11, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. God is love. God is also judge. And interestingly, the word judgment used there, the original word used in the original writing of the Bible in the Greek language. When I look, look it up, judgment, the original word in Greek is krisis. And it means condemnation. And I cannot help but maglaro yung isip ko. Napakaraming krisis sa kapaligiran natin ngayon. Kanina lang sa ating prayer items. Krisis sa mundo. Krisis sa Australia. Krisis sa Middle East. Krisis sa China and Hong Kong. Krisis sa ating bansa. Lindol. Bagyo. Man-made. Natural crisis. I can't help but thinking. Because the world has a wrong conception of sin, has a wrong conception of righteousness, then we are in crisis. Condemnation, judgment. And the Holy Spirit, in His ministry to the world, will show that Christ's death, apparently a victory for the enemy, for Satan, for the devil, was really a judgment on him and his followers. The Holy Spirit will convict us that we are all accountable before God. We are all accountable before God. The world has a concept of sin, has a concept of righteousness and judgment. And the world has relativized, has its own, yeah, relativized this concept of sin, righteousness, and judgment. The world wants to determine for itself what is sin and what is not sin. We can see that. What is happening in the world. Even, uh, even not uh, tampering with God's creation of man and woman. And uh, coming up with different laws. Uh, violating God's very creation. The world has its own concept of righteousness. What is right and what is wrong has all become relative and the world doesn't want accountability doesn't want to talk about judgment and what has it brought us different calamities different problems even bringing us to the brink of world war three that is the world but the holy spirit is still active in the world do not lose heart the Holy Spirit is there, is here, convicting the world. 
about sin, about righteousness, and about judgment. But how does the Holy Spirit do that? How does the Holy Spirit convict the world? And this is where I would like to focus on our partnership with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will fulfill His ministry to the world through His disciples. He uses people with His disciples. It's written in your bulletin. It's the same thing. Through us and with us. First, with His presence. The Holy Spirit indwells us. He has a ministry to the world, but He reaches out to the world through us with His presence. The disciples were sad. John chapter 16, verse 5, the Lord Jesus Christ has just told them He is leaving them. And they were sad. Their reaction was grief and sorrow. But then the Lord Jesus Christ said, it is to their advantage. It is for your good that He is going away. That He leaves them because He will send the Spirit instead. He told these grieving, sorrowful disciples, I tell you the truth and take note. Every time in the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ says, I tell you the truth. Ano sa Tagalog yun? Sa totoo lang. It doesn't mean na yung iba niyang sinabi, hindi totoo. Of course, no? Pero pag sinabi niya, several times, I tell you the truth. Or truly, truly, I say to you, very important. Pakatandaan niyo ito. It is for your good that I am going away. Because unless I go away, the Counselor, or the Holy Spirit, or the Advocate, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send Him to you. Let's put ourselves in the place of the disciples. For three years, these disciples have left everything to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. They have invested their lives and their future para sa Lord. And then the Lord is telling them, iiwanan ko na kayo. Sabi ni Lord sa kanila, the, Lord, the world will persecute you. And then sabi ni Lord, iiwanan ko na kayo. And then sabi ni Jesus Christ, there's this mission ahead of, of you. And then sabi ni Lord, iiwanan ko na kayo. Let's put ourselves in the place, in the shoes of this, or in the sandals of these disciples. Anong iisipin mo? Normal lang, di ba? Ano? Matapos na itaya ko lahat sa inyo, Lord, iiwanan nyo kami. So it's understandable that they were grieving, that they were sorrowful, that they were afraid. Pero sabi ni Jesus Christ, no, it is for your good. Naaalis ako because I will send the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, naisip-isip ko na. I don't know about you, kung naisip nyo rin. Basta parang naisip ko, mas masarap siguro kung nakasama ko si Jesus Christ nung panahon na yun, nung nandito pa siya sa lupa. Mas okay siguro. Well, on second thought, eh yung mga disciples niya, nakasama siya araw-araw, every moment, for three years. Nagdududa pa rin sa kanya. Tumalikod pa rin sa kanya. Ipinagkahanulo pa rin siya. Sabi ni Jesus Christ, mas advantageous na aalis ako, Holy Spirit nasa sa inyo. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will reveal all that He is to us. Ang problema ng mga disciples, hindi nila naunawaan talaga ang Panginoon. Sunod sila ng sunod, pero many times, nagtatanong sila sa isip nila. Many times, sino ba ito? Who is this? That even the, the winds and the waves obey Him. May pagdududa pa rin eh. Kulang pa rin ang kanilang kaalaman. But, tayo ngayon, magali ba tayong tumalikot sa Panginoon? Of course, you would say, hindi. Huh? Pag may mga pagsubak, pag may kumukontra sa Panginoon, tatalikot ba tayo sa Kanya? Ipapagkanulo ba natin siya? Of course, hindi. Ano kaibahan natin sa mga disciples? Ba't sila tumalikod? Bakit pinagkanulo siya? 
the Holy Spirit has been ministering to us, has been working in our lives. In fact, sa totoo lang, lahat ng alam natin about the Lord Jesus Christ, ang pagsunod sa Kanya, ang pagkapit natin sa Kanya, ang pagsamba natin sa Kanya, is because of what the Holy Spirit has revealed to us. Through His Word. Paano ba natin nakilala ng Panginoon? Through His Word. And who gave us His Word? The Holy Spirit. And this Holy Spirit that gave us His Word, na nagturo sa atin tungkol sa Kanya, kaya kung makapit tayo sa Kanya, lives inside each one of us. O nga, tama si Lord. It is good, it is better that He lives us, sabi niya. Dahil nandyan naman ang Holy Spirit. I will fast ask the Father and He will give you another counselor to be with you forever. Another counselor. Pag narinig natin yung salitang another, ano ibig sabihin nun? Another. Sa Tagalog? Sa Tagalog? Isa pa. Or another? Iba. Oh, but tama yun. Isa pa, hindi iba. Kasi the word another, real meaning of that word is something that is separate but of exactly the same kind. No? So, tama. Isa pa. Nakatulad na ating Panginoon. Hindi iba na kaiba. Ibig sabihin, kung sino si Lord, yun din ang Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God in three persons. So in one sense, Sinasabi ni Lord, hindi ko naman kayo talaga iiwanan. Ako pa rin yan. The Holy Spirit who, is, who will be in you. And I tell you the truth. Ito pa. It is better that I go away. Kasi anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. Pero hindi lang yon. Even greater things than this. Mas marami pa tayong magagawa, sabi niya, because I am going to the Father. Meaning, if it goes to the Father, He will send the Holy Spirit and we will do even greater things. When Jesus Christ was with His disciples, His miraculous work was confined to wherever He is. As a human being, nakipag-identify sa atin, He was bound by, bounded by space and time. Di ba? Yung kanyang mga miracles, ginawa niya sa isang lugar at a particular time. But with the Holy Spirit, in the same essence of our Lord Jesus Christ, in us, within us, with the Holy Spirit, in us, He is wherever we are. He is wherever they are. Kaya naman, they can do even greater things. Kasi sa ngayon, when Jesus Christ was here, He was confined to a particular place at a particular time to work His miracles. Sa ngayon, the Holy Spirit is with, within every believer in every country, in the whole world, in every place, all the time. And with Him, everywhere, all the time, working in the lives of the believers, the miraculous work continues. And we can do even greater things. We can do even greater things. So, the focus is, we abide in Christ, He abides in us through the Holy Spirit. God works in partnership with men. Of course, God is sovereign. He can do things by Himself. But by His sovereignty and by His divine will, He has decided that He will do His ministry. He will do His ministry. He will do His work in the world with us. Kasama tayo. Partner tayo. And we can see this throughout the Bible. Lagi, niyang tumat Lagi siya tumatawag ng tao to be His partner in doing His ministry to the world. Who wrote the Bible? Matthew? John? Isaiah? Jeremiah? No. God? No. Who wrote the Bible? 
God and men in partnership. In very close partnership. That did not write the Bible. And those men, the prophets and the gospel writers, didn't write the Bible by themselves. It's a partnership between God and men. Primarily through the Holy Spirit. God works with and through men. Who divided the Red Sea? Moses? God? Moses and God. Moses and God. By himself, Moses cannot divide the, could not have divided the Red Sea. And God did not just divide the Red Sea by himself. He used Moses. It's a partnership between God and man. Who built the ark for the great flood? Who built the ark? Noah? God? God and Noah. Partnership. So my point is, God, the Holy Spirit, has his ministry to the world. But he will use us. In partnership with us, he will use us to do his ministry. Jesus' ministry on earth will continue through the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in the disciples. We have sung earlier, He is working. He is working in the world. He is working in our lives. Whether we feel it or not, whether we recognize it or not, He is working. And that partnership is that we, the disciples, the believers, should decide to partner with Him, to work with Him in doing His ministry of convicting the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. He is in us in order for us to reach out to the world. Some people may think that the Holy Spirit is just for our personal consumption. Oh, well, now Holy Spirit, I'm okay, I'm good, I'm saved. But the, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit is for us to continue His ministry and the target is the world. We are nourished, not, we are nourished, period. We are nourished for a purpose. We are nourished to flourish, to be fruitful, to reach out to the world and fulfill his ministry with his presence and with his power, with the power available to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has many names in the scripture. The original word is parakletos, parakletos. It's translated differently. The real meaning is one called alongside to help. Somebody to help us. So it's called the helper. In other translations, counselor, comforter, advocate, encourager, and strengthener. By these different names of the Holy Spirit, we can see His ministry in us. To give us the power. To comfort us, strengthen us, to, to advocate for us, to help us, counsel us to be able to do His ministry with His power in fruit bearing, to be able to bear fruit, fruitfulness. John chapter 15 talks about the vine and the branches and the fruit. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, uh, He wants us to be, God wants us to be fruitful. God is glorified when we are fruitful. What does the fruit mean? What does the fruit refer to? What do you mean by being fruitful? What do you mean by fruit? Well, some people say fruit is the fruit of our evangelism and witnessing. And that is right. God wants us to bear fruit in evangelism. Fruit is the fruit of the Spirit. God wants us to manifest the fruit of the Spirit, to be fruitful in the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. But you know, 
as I was doing my research on this passage, it says that when the Lord Jesus Christ talked about the vine, talked about the branches, and he talked about being fruitful, you know what was in the mind of his disciples? We have to transport ourselves to the original context of the situation. The original disciples, the disciples were listening to him. He talked about the vine, talked about the branches and fruit. What came into their mind? Most probably it's not about witnessing. Although that's part of it. Most probably it's not about the fruit of the Spirit. Paul came up with the list later. But most probably they're talking about the fruit of their lives as they reach out to the world in righteousness and justice and doing good, serving others. Living out the ethics of the kingdom of God in the world. Making the world or recruiting the world to be part of the kingdom of God. Most probably, Bible commentators say, that when Jesus Christ was talking in John 15, they were recalling Isaiah chapter 5, wherein it's, the title is The Song of the Vine. Then talks about God and his vineyard and he was looking for fruit. Part of Isaiah chapter 5 verse 7 said, The vineyard of the Lord is the nation of Israel. And the people of Judah are the vines he delighted in. And he was looking for fruit of the vine. He looked for justice and so bloodshed. For righteousness but heard cries of distress. He was looking for these things from his vineyard, from the world. It's all about sin and righteousness and judgment and he found no fruit. In fact, he found fruitlessness. He found the opposite. And part of our calling is to witness, part of our calling to be fruitful in the fruit of the Spirit, part of our witness is to promote righteousness and justice wherever we we are in fruit bearing we have his power we have his power in guiding us to the truth when the spirit of truth comes one of the names of the holy spirit is the spirit of truth because he will guide us into all truth the power of truth over evil Truth is powerful. And when you are in the truth, you are with the Spirit. And you have power. In the encounter of our Lord Jesus Christ versus Satan in, uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 4, three rounds with Satan. And the Lord was victorious in all three rounds. Was it a power encounter? Tagisan ba sila ng sino mas malakas sa kanila? No. It was a truth encounter. And Satan was totally defeated in all his temptations by the truth encounter. Truth has power over evil. Truth has power over evil. And we are to proclaim and live out his truth in our lives. God the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth and we, when we are promoting the truth, spiritual truth, all kinds of truth, then we are on the side of God and we are powerful. In this era of fake news, in this era of all false teaching, in this era of people deciding what is right and wrong, we must stick to the truth. And the truth comes from the Word of God, and the Word of God comes from the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit within us, we must be people of truth. He does His ministry to the world, convicting the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment with His power also in our witnessing. Yeah, that is part of it. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. But this witnessing must be both by word and by deed. So when we speak about fruitfulness, nourished to flourish, 
This must be seen not only in our words. Gano tayo kagaling mag-Bible study? Gano tayo kagaling magturo, mag-mangaral? This must be seen in our lives. We must witness through our lives what it is, how it is to become or to be a member of the kingdom of God, a member of the family of God. When people see us, when people observe us, they must see the difference between people of the world and people of the kingdom. Everywhere we go, we must bring the Lord's presence, the Lord's truth, the Lord's power, the Lord's good news of the kingdom. By word and by deed. Came across a very interesting quotation by St. Francis of Assisi. of Assisi. He said, preach the gospel all the time. Because wherever you are, all the time, you have the Holy Spirit within you, you are reaching out to the world, and if necessary, use words. Of course, words are important. But uh, he's just emphasizing a point. That sometimes we focus so much on words that we fail to demonstrate the righteousness, the, the justice, and how we deal with sin in this world. We must witness by word and by deed. And the Holy Spirit is working in us, with us, through us, in partnership with us in our service, in serving. And this is all about spiritual gifts, which I will not discuss, because that will be the message next Sunday. And Sunday after next, if you look at your bulletin, it's all about spiritual gifts. But He empowers us in serving Him. So mga kapatid, my point is, God has given us the Holy Spirit. He has given us the Holy Spirit for a purpose. Not just for ourselves to be satisfied with Him. We are nourished to flourish. As the Spirit abides in us. And He has promised that. He will not break His promise. He abides in us. He will be in us forever, He said. But of course, we have to do our part in partnership with, with Him. We must abide in the Spirit. Then together, together, we can fulfill His ministry to the world for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has said, He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. It's all about the glory of the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have all of the Holy Spirit within us. But the question is, does the Holy Spirit have all of us? Yan pong pagbulay-bulayan natin. Even in our prayer and fasting this week, we have all of the Holy Spirit. Nasaan pinakait sa atin? Pero, does He have all of us? He abides in us, but do we fully abide in Him? If He abides in us and we abide in Him, then, together, we can fulfill His ministry and also our ministry to the world. Panginoon, maraming salamat po that you do not leave us as orphans. Yes, Lord, hindi namin kayo nakasama in the flesh nung kayo ay nabuhay dito bilang tao. Pero, in one way, it is advantageous to us because we know you better now. We love you better now because of the ministry of the Holy Spirit who has put your truth, the truth about you, in our hearts. So, Lord, help us to realize that we have that power, the presence of God within us and you have given us your presence, your power, Lord, for us to continue your ministry in this world, for us to be able to convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. Help us, Lord, to fulfill our part. You will never leave us nor forsake us. You always fulfill your part. But help us, as we have all of you within us, 
enable us to give you all of us to be used by you. We ask this all for your glory and honor. In your most precious name, amen.